That's a good way to get up, isn't it? Amen. It really is, to get up and have, uh, have Jesus being the first thing, Brother Eugene, that's on your mind and, and thinking about, like I mentioned earlier, about the, the promises, uh, yeah. Brother James, that he has in store for us and, and, uh, and understanding uh, uh, that he's going to keep every one of those and knowing that, that we're going to be upon this, uh, his footstool for a little while longer and it's, it's not going to always be uh, 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 really uh, uh, smooth and it's not going to be uh, all, all gravy down here. You know, uh, uh, I know we're going to have trials and tribulation and turmoils and uh, we're going to get older if the Lord blesses us to live long enough. I haven't got there quite yet, but, uh, uh, but, but you know, maybe, maybe one day and uh, but you know, no, you know what? It, we're, we're, it's just part of life. It's, it, it is. When we get older, we we start aching. We we have more problems, and and we see things that we just don't agree with. And there's just all kinds of chaos. It seems like that's going on. And uh, but one thing rest assured, and that is that that God is still on the throne of mercy. He's still ruling today, and He still has His hand in everything. Don't don't kid yourself. Just because you happen to look at things and see you have the ability, if you'll just surrender yourself to Christ and follow him, you can see the silver lining. You can see the good. You, 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 can, you can be like uh, Joshua and Caleb whenever they went out to, uh, in, over into the promised land and they spied some things out there. Uh, you know what? They were able to see the good things when there was a whole lot of bad that was around them. They was able to see the good things that God had in store for them. So, so tonight, uh, I, I'm going to ask you if you would just do that, just for a little bit. Let's overlook one another's faults. Let's, let's, let's get put the problems that we have, let's put it behind us. Because, listen, friends, you, who knows? We may never have to deal with those again. Listen, again, God can do all things. So, so I want us to, uh, uh, to get our minds upon the good things. Let's, let's see the good things that God has in store for us and what he can do for you tonight. We're not promising you a bed of roses. We're not promising you a million dollars. We're not saying, oh, all this, uh, uh, your financial worries or, or all your problems at work or, or the situation at home. We're not saying it's all going to be better and, and this and that uh, uh, right now, but we're saying that right now you can have peace of mind. Right now you can have Jesus. And I promise you, the more you hold on to Jesus, the more you focus upon Jesus, the more you, you get your mind off of the things of the world and get them set up on Christ. I'm here to tell you, you'll, you'll, you'll have a lot better, a lot better view of, of, of what's in store. You, and you'll have uh, right down in your heart. And, and I heard something, and, and that's kind of, uh, I guess, the direction I'm going today. And, and uh, whenever I heard this, I immediately went to my Bible, and I opened it up, and I looked, and I said, Boy, I must, I must preach out of this an awful lot because I got all kinds of stuff written down where I've studied things and things. And, uh, but, you know, I, I've often said this, I, and, and I, I believe this to be true. I, uh, I, I guess it's been several years ago on, on uh, 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 one particular scripture. I, I preached about three weeks on it and never did get back to the same thing. It's just sometimes, you know, the Lord will just lay something out and, and it may be in, in, in this, this particular scripture that somebody needs to hear something. And, and, but what spoke to me, and you'll find this in, in, in 1 John uh, uh, chapter 4, and, and it starts in verse 7. I'm just going to read a couple there, and then, and then I want to jump over in, into 1 Corinthians. But, <clears throat> but, uh, but, but it says here in, in, uh, in chapter 7 of 1 John chapter 4, it said, Beloved, of course that's speaking to, uh, to, to God's children, uh, the, the ones that have been saved. That, that's the beloved here. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. And everyone that loves is born of God. Now remember, this is, this is, we must remember what love really is. <clears throat> and we'll get to that here in just a minute. You know what, we've watered down what love is today in a natural sense. We, we've watered it down to just give me what I want and you love me. If you don't give me what I want or what I want, and that's not the case. You know, God, I praise, I praise the good Lord that he's not always given me what I desire. He, he, knows, he knows what is needful and he provides for me. And he doesn't let this silly boy get what this silly boy wants all the time. 
And, and so, so we, we have to remember this. And so, so but he's sitting here and he's, he's, he's telling them about love. And he, he says, uh, he says that, uh, uh, and everyone that loves is born of God and knows God. He that loves not knoweth not God. And this is the next little part of this uh, uh, verse 8. Now, you know what? Hey, listen, if you've got a Bible, I want you to circle this. I want, you to, I want you to go and I want you to really meditate upon this. Because, you know what? We, we always know that, that, that God loves us, doesn't he? And, and if I were to tell you, ask you some attributes of what God is and, and all this, you'd say, well, you know, God, God loves us. Uh, uh, he's, uh, he's the creator. He's, he's the father. He's all these things. They listen, and, and he is all these things. And, uh, but, but, but here I'm going to read to you what it says God is. This is who God is, not just what he does. This is who God is. Now, your natural mind, if you have a natural mind like mine anyway, you can't wrap your mind around this. Uh, but, but here it says, uh, uh, God is love. It's not just what he does, it's who he is. It's not what he just offers. Now remember, this is who God is. We know that God is a spirit. We know this. The Bible teaches us that God is a spirit. It teaches us that he, he is a lot of different things. Uh, uh, he is the Father. He is the Creator. He is all these things. But He is love. Boy, I can't, I can't understand that, Sister Jean. I know He loves me. I know He loves the world. I know, I know by His actions. But the very fact that He is love. And then you back up and you read that again. For everyone that loves is born of God. Well, if God is a spirit, and God is love, in order to love, you have to have that spirit dwelling in you. If God is love, and I believe that he is according to the scripture, and then so that means you have to have the love. I'm not talking natural love, the way I would naturally love my wife, or love my children, or love my uh, community, or love my job, or whatever. I'm talking about, friends, a love that can enter into your life that, that will never end. A love, uh, uh, I believe you, you said a while ago, unconditional. Uh, a love that is out there. Uh, so much beyond this natural love. You have to have the Spirit of God dwelling in you. And God even says in, in the record here uh, that if you have not the Spirit of God, you're none of His. God is love. Boy, I tell you what, that, that brings in a whole new meaning to what this, what would people say, I love you. I can say I love you and I can mean it from the heart because I have love that dwells in me. And so the fact that we understand that God is love and the fact that we are to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, to understand that we are to love one another, uh, friends, as Christ has loved the church. That's what uh, the husbands are to do for the wives. Uh, and friends, listen, uh, uh, we're, to, we're to love uh, uh, everybody and everything, but it's not just a natural love. It's that love of God. Now you have to be born again to have this love. Now if you've been born again, you have this love, are we doing it? Now listen, that doesn't mean we just sit by and we just give whatever somebody wants and say, there you go, oh I love you. And we have to stand on the truth. We have to be honest. We have to understand that, you know, this is God dwelling in us. He's giving us part of himself. That's what the Holy Spirit is. It's a down payment, if you will, on what we're to get one day, the full promise. So, so today, I, I want you to, that, that just kind of got me right there. And, and, uh, <clears throat> and if I go into uh, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and, and this is, I know a lot of people are very familiar with this, and, and, and if you start there, uh, I'm going again. Going to just read just a little bit of it. Uh, it starts around uh, around verse four. Of course, uh, the King James version uses the word charity, and a lot of other versions use the word love. Uh, but that's that's what it's saying. This is the Apostle Paul telling them he just went through and giving them a bunch of spiritual gifts and all these. Or he didn't give it to them, but explaining all this stuff. And and so here he is, and he's saying that love. It says charity, but love suffereth, suffereth long, and is kind. In other words, it's patient. It's patient and kind. 
And, and, and I'm going to read just a few more, but I want to come back to that one because it, I think it's very important. It says, charity envieth not. It, it, um, uh, charity vaulteth not itself and is not puffed up. In other words, there's no envy or you're not boasting. That, that, that's, that's not love. Uh, love, it doth not have, it's, it does not behave itself unseemingly. Seeketh not her own is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. In other words, it's not arrogant, it's not rude. And, and, and I want us to, to, to understand, and there's a list. He has he is kind of given us a list here of, of things about what love is and what it's not. And, and, and the first thing that, that jumps out at me here is that it, starts, it says that it's long-suffering. Just as you read, you know, again, I said God is love, right? If you go in, I believe it's a, 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 a later on in 1 Peter, I think, 1 or 2 Peter, where he, he says he's long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all come to repentance. You see, God is long-suffering. You think about uh, uh, how far down the road, Brother Stephen, we went in sin, how we turned our back and we went the other way. God was long-suffering with us. He was patient. Are you patient today with people? Are you patient in your walk? Are you patient with your co-workers? Are you patient with your family? Hey, listen, we live in a hurried up world. Uh, how, you know what? We don't go and we don't visit one another the way we used to. We don't go and just sit down and have a cup of coffee or something and just talk, do we? Uh, we why? Because we're always in a hurry. Uh, this world is in a hurry. It's always you got to get here, you got to get there. Did you not know uh, that this world is enmity against God? Uh, friends, listen. Listen, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see oh, what Satan is doing. He's speeding things up. He's always getting your mind on the next, the big, bigger and better deal. Uh, this is going on here. You got to hurry, hurry, hurry. Friends, if you're in a hurry, you're not walking with God. God works outside of time. And see, it doesn't mean anything to him. But I understand something about God. God is love. And friends, according to this, love is patience. So friends, today, if you're in a hustle-bustle kind of way, if you're hurrying to get here, if you're hurrying to get there, you're trying to outrun the Lord. You're not walking with Him because He's patient. You need to slow down. We're in too big a hurry today. We're always trying, and listen, I, I've said it, if I've not said it once, I've not said it a thousand times, I'm here to tell you, I preach to myself more than I do anybody else. I'm probably getting the biggest hurry, I'm probably going here, and I'm going there, and I'm not thinking, I'm not sitting down, I'm not asking God, is this where I should go? Is this what I should be doing? Instead, I've got it already made up in my mind. I know this is right, so I'm going, but friends, listen, it's not me. I should be a follower of Christ at all times, in all things. Where's the fire, so to say? Oh, I, I understand there's some people that need to get up and get busy. There's some people that need to have a little sense of urgency about them. If you're out, lost, ruined, and undone, listen, friends, time is against you. You need to be up and get busy. You need to start turning to the Lord. You need to do these things. But, friends, if you've got him, slow down. You'll get there. All through the Bible, we see where people tried to act on their own. They tried to do it their way, at their pace. The very first thing that it's telling us here about charity, about love, about God, is that he's patient. So if we're in a hurry, and if we're trying to hurry and get this done and get that done, and trying to hurry, 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 we're doing it without God. God's patient. Oh, thank the good Lord he's patient with me. But if I want to get it done right, if I want to do something that is profitable for myself, for my loved ones, for my community, for the people that's listening, for the people that, uh, uh, friends, uh, uh, that, that, that come in contact with me, I must be patient. I must be patient with my walk, and I must be patient with them. We've lost patience, I think, along the way. Somehow, somewhere, Sister Jean, I don't know where it went, but we lost it somewhere. And you know what? 
It's right there. It's the first one. Matter of fact, you go, you go to the fruit of the Spirit. You know, uh, uh, you know how it talks, I think it's in Galatians, where it has this, uh, the, the fruits of the Spirit. What, what the Spirit of God, what it brings forth. What's the first thing that it brings forth? Is love, actually. Is love. God. That's what it brings forth. It brings forth, it brings forth seven or eight of them, I think. It brings forth, uh, I know it brings forth love and joy and peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness. I believe it brings forth faith, meekness, and then what's that last one, brother? Temperance, which is patience. It brings forth all those things. Are we patient today, or are we in a hurry? If you're in a hurry, you're like a cat running in a circle or a dog running in a circle trying to catch its own tail. You're not going to get anywhere because you're not following what God wants you to do. It says it right here. He's, he's, love suffers long. It's patient. And it's kind. Are we kind to people today? Or are we saying, it's my way. You're wrong. You're, you're this, you're that. I ain't going to put up with you no more. Uh, you, you, and it's just get out of my face. I don't like you. Now, now, friends, that's not being kind. I'm not saying, if we go on, we'll read some more of this here. Uh, it's not saying that we just put up with anything or, or we okay everything. But we can be kind. I can disagree with you and still be kind with you. I don't have to call you a name. You know, I don't have to win every argument. Uh, my status in heaven does not depend on how many arguments I win or lose. That does not qualify me to get into heaven. You go on. It says that charity envieth not, it vaulteth not itself up. In other words, again, it's not boastful. It's not arrogant. You go on down through there. Uh, here's, uh, and I looked back there and I saw my wife laughing at me when I said that. She was saying, yeah, you, you, you always think you have to be right, I guess. It goes, but, but that kind of leads into one. It says, rejoicing not in iniquity, but rejoicing in the truth. You know what? Um, again, you, you go through all of these, uh, not being easily provoked. Uh, think of the, think of no evil. You know what, there, there's a way that people think that they, it has to be their way or no way. That's not love. That is not love. It, because you can get into that when you see here. Rejoicing, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. How many times do we see people out here that they're celebrating sin they're saying it's all right one of my favorite lines don't judge me you're not my judge people that rejoice in iniquity that rejoice in in, in falseness that's not love and if you agree with it you're not loving them Enabling someone's sin is not love. Helping someone earn or continue on their way to an eternal damnation is not love. You see, God is love. And God sent a way for the whole human race to be redeemed. God sent a, a His Son down here to pay your penalty. That's love. God made a way because you had no way. Uh, friends, we uh, were on our way to a self-destruction, eternally separated from love. But God being love and loving us the way He has, uh, He sent a lifeline, if you will. He sent His Son down here to pay your penalty and allow you to have an opportunity to follow his son back to heaven. That's love. Giving you what you want, giving an unrepentant heart what they want is not love. Matter of fact, it's the exact opposite. 
In verse 7, it says, Beareth all things, believeth all things, hope all things, endure all things. These are having to do with relationship. Doesn't believe doesn't mean you just believe everything and as a no. You you must believe. Uh, uh, believe upon the name of Jesus, obviously. Believe in every word that comes out of God's mouth. Believing the good instead of the bad. Kind of like when you go to, uh, to what I said about uh, Joshua and Caleb. God made a promise. They look to the promise. They look to the good. How many times do you see people, uh, even in this uh, natural world here, where, where they will automatically, Brother Stephen, they'll look and they'll find the fault in you real fast. They'll look at you and they'll say, well, I just don't like the way you look. Oh, so-and-so, you should have seen what they've done. Or there'll be a situation that'll happen. I know, hey, listen, if, you, if, you've, if you've worked or you've been at work or whatever, it's going to be there. It's going to be in, uh, in your social groups or whatever. And somebody is always going to look at somebody else and say, that person, uh, this is what they've done. And, and try to, I always try to look at the good. And I always try to say, well, maybe I don't know the whole story. Yes, you do. You know it. It's the way, they, it's the way people are. They look to the bad. Why? Because if they can get you bad enough, it makes them look a little better. Well, I've said this time and time again too, Brother Stephen, God don't grade on a curve. You don't get to go to heaven because I've been too bad. Brother Tinsley, you don't get to go to heaven because you're better than anybody in this church house. You get to go to heaven because the Spirit of God has moved inside of you. And that's it. And if you don't have that Spirit of God, according to the Scripture, you are none of His. It goes on. And you can find this again in, in, uh, in chapter 13 of 1 Corinthians. It goes on. He tells them, like I said, he just got through telling them about some spiritual gifts. And, and uh, he says, charity never fails. Love never fails. Never even in the scripture, it tells us that love covers a multitude of sin. We need to really be loving people. We need to love God, and we need to love one another. By the way, what are the two commandments that Jesus said? They said the whole law hinged on these. To love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love thy neighbor as thyself. There's absolutely no sin in love. It says, charity never fails. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And again, remember, he's talking about, he just told them about all these different gifts. Whoever, some of the smartest minds that have ever walked the face of the earth, many of them are gone now. Their knowledge was laid down with them. It says, for, for we know in part, and we prophesy in part. In other words, we prophesy with what we know. But, which, but that which is perfect is come, or complete is come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. In other words, when we have the whole meal, we won't be snacking anymore, so to say. When I was a child, I spake as a child, I understood as a child, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass, darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know even as also I am known. And this is the, the part that I wanted to get to. And now abideth faith, hope, and charity, or love. And brothers, which is the greatest? Love. Love. Charity. If you back up, I believe it's here. Yeah, if, if you back up, I started in verse 4. If you start in verse 3, it says, And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor. I mean, you've seen these people that go out and they're doing all these good deeds. He says, And though I give my body to be burned. In other words, you're standing up for a good cause. And you're going to lay your life down for that good cause. 
You know, there was a time in my life when I told people many times, I said, you know, I be always believed in God. I always believed in God. I always believed that Jesus was the Son of God. And if somebody would have come and said, well, I'm going to take your life if you don't, I'll, you're just going to have to kill me. They'd have killed me, I'd have died and went to hell. Because even though I did acknowledge and did believe with the, from the head that there was a God and there was a Jesus and all this, I didn't believe from the heart. I didn't trust and I didn't love. I was doing it my way. I was the one in a hurry. I was that dog chasing the tail. I wasn't following Christ. And you'll have all these good people. They'll feed the poor. They'll do all these things. I even believe. Uh, friends, listen, uh, I don't want to get too long here. He says, but anyway, he says, if you have not charity... In other words, if you're not doing it in love, if you don't have the love of God in you, and remember, God does not just love you. He is love. This is who He is. If you have not love, it profits you nothing. You can do all the good deeds that you feel are good deeds. You can, you can sit in a church pew. You can sing songs. You can even come to this place and you can preach. You can do all these different things. You can go out you can give all your money to charity and you can do all these great things. But if you don't have the love of God in you, it's not going to profit you one thing. And if you do have the love of God in you, we need to start showing that love. We need to start first. And I believe we start our day with heaven on our mind. Let's start our day talking to the Lord. Lord, you lead, I'll follow. And, and friends, listen, we should end the day that way. Did did we do better today than what we did yesterday? You need to just, not, not just do it in the morning. You need to do it all day long. You need to find people and let them know that you love them. You need to tell them that. There's no shame in looking at somebody and saying, Brother James, I love you. There is no shame in that. I understand that people will look at you kind of funny. Well, who does he think he is? Well, I can tell you who I am. I'm a child of the king. That's who I am. I'm somebody who has their name enrolled in the Lamb's Book of Life. I'm somebody who has a reason to love you. Because God loves me. Because God, who is love, dwells in me. And we don't need to be in such a hurry. Trust me. As, <clears throat> as the old saying is, Ain't nobody made, made it out of this earth or made it out of here alive. We're all going to go to the grave. You might be in a hurry to get there. I don't know. We need to calm down. We need to be patient. Wait upon the Lord. He leads, we follow. We get in a hurry. We're trying to outrun the Lord. And it doesn't work. It never has and it never will. I want you to know, friend, God loves you today. He loves you because he is love. That's who he is. He paid the price for you. He made a way so that you could have this love inside of you. So that you could spread that love. You could share that love with people. You could be an example. We've got people that are drowning in their own misery right now. And they don't know it. They think they're happy. They're sinking in sin. And they're going deeper and deeper and deeper. God is throwing you a lifeline. He is reaching for you. You cannot get to him, but he will come to you. I, again, how many times have we said, got up here and preached it, and it how the Lord has lifted us up out of the mar and the clay. I couldn't climb out on my own. I couldn't do it on my own, and neither can you. But Jesus, he will come where you're at, and he will lift you up, and he will make you a new creature. He will enroll your name in the Lamb's Book of Life because he's love. So, with that, if you brothers want to get you a song, I hope that this message has helped some people. We get in too big of a hurry. 
our blood pressure gets too high. We worry about all these different things. And I've always said where there's worry, there's no faith. And listen, I worry just as much as anybody else. And I need to stop doing it. We need to relax, calm down, understand Jesus is in control. He's going to come back and get us one day. And until then, we need to fight the fight that he wants us to fight. And that we don't have to be in such a big hurry to try to gain the next dollar. It's all going to burn up anyway. Go ahead and sing.